friends, Heidi here from Rain Country. God is good all the time. And I'm here for another this and that video. And if you are new, what these particular videos are about that I try to put out once a week or every other week at least, is just, uh, well, it's a this and that. That means I'm covering various different topics all in one video. A lot of it's going to be directing you back to videos I already have, letting you know of videos that are coming out soon, and also giving you little updates here and there of various things going on. So before we get started, I want to say one more thing about social media, and I might have to do this a few times, so bear with me those who already know this, is I, even though I haven't shut down my Facebook accounts, pages, and group yet, I am likely going to be doing that soon. And so it's really important that people understand if you are still trying to message me at Facebook, I'm not there to read your messages. So you need to email me at raincountryhomestead at gmail.com. That is the number one best way to contact me is through email. It's It keeps it all in one place for me as well. One of my issues with Facebook was I had two separate pages plus, plus the profile plus the group and then so that's four different places just on Facebook alone where people were messaging asking me questions whether it be in comments or in private messages and I couldn't keep up with them and there were so many things that I miss in there then still trying to keep up on YouTube comments and the email as well and Etsy so if we can kind of get it all in one place then that would be easiest for me now I do have the MeWe account and that is the only other social media thing I'm going to have and I'll be using on a somewhat regular basis but even there my time is going to be very limited I try to check in at least once a day but it's still best if you need to ask me a question to just email me at that ad I'm getting away from Facebook for many reasons many reasons not just one but a lot of it really is about simplifying especially now that I'm watching my grandbaby twice a week which I'm loving so far. Anyway, let's get to the topics I was going to talk about. Now, one of the things I wanted to start off with is, and it seems kind of weird talking about this in the kitchen, but is septic care. And this came to mind because la last year we did a couple of videos. It's been at least a year. And I did one on a natural treatment for uh, unclogging your sinks and tubs and whatever and then Patrick also did one on another method to unclog like your kitchen sink but this will also apply to tubs bathroom sinks and so on and so I will link to both of those videos down below but I was reminded of this because the other day for the first time in actually a long time I think it's because there's only two people in our house now so our tub doesn't get clogged up as often but you know we got a lot of hair amongst all of us and so it's really common for our tub to get clogged up at least once a year. It was starting to drain slow the other day. It's like, wow, this is the first time I've had to deal with this in a while. And while lye can be an okay option if you absolutely have to, it's best to avoid it because, you know, obviously it's caustic. It can be harsh on your pipes, but it can also, this is the most important thing to me, is it can also kill the uh, bacteria that's in your septic tank and it's really important that that stays alive you've got to have good lively bacteria to break down those solids in your septic tank so there's two methods i prefer and both of those are in those videos but i did this the other day is i did the baking soda followed up with the vinegar followed up with after that sat for a long period of time with boiling hot water and that's a that's a pretty effective method that works most of the time, especially if you keep up on it. Don't wait until your drain is completely plugged solid. It might not work as well, but if it's draining slowly or even as maintenance, that's something you can do once a month just to help keep that buildup from building up that then makes a solid clog. And that's going to be much safer for your pipes and for your septic tank. And so and then the other method would be using that water bladder. So I recommend you check out those two videos. I'll be linking down below. But with that, I wanted to add a, a really important thing. And that is when you eat healthy, not only is it good for your body, it's actually healthy for your septic tank. And case in point, our uh, last time we had to have our septic tank pumped, the guy that uh, we had do it, is you know he's been doing it forever and he knows a lot about health and septic tanks and he can take one look into a person's septic tank and tell whether or not they're healthy eaters and when he looked into our septic tank he knew right off the bat you guys must eat healthy 
and he can tell because of the, how active things are, how compacted or not compacted things are in there. Because people who eat a lot of junk food with a lot of unnatural preservatives added to it and, and chemicals and just so on and so forth, that actually has a pretty big impact on your septic tank and how well it's going to break down the solids. And people who don't eat healthy or need their septic tanks pumped more often because that stuff's not breaking down and can also cause damage to their septic tank in general. So it's interesting to me how eating healthy doesn't just affect you and your own body, but various other things around you, including your septic tank. And one more thing I forgot to say, this also includes don't pour a bunch of bleach into your toilets or down your drain. Don't uh, don't use any of those toilet bowl cleaners, those things that sit in there and turn your water blue. All that stuff is bad for your septic tank. And obviously bleach, as you should know, is going to kill any of the beneficial bacteria as well. Okay, so let's move on to another topic. So um, I did, last year, I did a series on kitchen tips and tricks, and that was a fun series, and I'll link to the whole playlist down below. And one of the topics had to do with repurposing different things in your kitchen to use them in other ways that can save you money and time. And that is uh, one of the things I was talking about was with the Corel specifically, and I'm sure this will work with other types of bowls and dishes, but one thing that's nice about having Corel dishes and Corel bowls is that the dishes will fit perfectly over the bowls. So the smaller Corel bowl like this mixing bowl and the salad plate like this Corel fits the same way as the large plate and bowl. And so this makes a really nice lid. Let's say I mixed up a batch of potato salad in here and I had it set aside earlier or we had a bunch left over. I can simply throw a plate over it instead of using plastic wrap, which has to get thrown out. But also not only does this cover the bowl, you can set things on top of the bowl or on top of the plate so that you can also save room in your refrigerator. I was reminded of this because here's another thing that you can do is that the other day I had made a chicken pot pie from some leftover roasted chicken. The same thing can apply. Obviously you can do it this way, but if you got a, a pie in there where the crust is going around the edges, that's not gonna work as well. So then you can turn the plate upside down this way. It's not gonna stay in place as easily as it does when it's in when it's a right side up, but it does make a perfect cover for a pie pan. And so that's what that's what we do is we actually, and I don't think I covered, I talked about that in that video, so I wanted to bring that up. But again, go check out that video link because I talk about many other ways that you can do stuff like this in at least one of those videos. So anyway, this is just another thing that you can do that means that you can save money on plastic wrap and also give you a way that you can stack your stuff in the fridge to save you space. I, I love this idea and it's easy. <laughs> And then I've talked about this little lantern in uh, other videos. I have it out because I, I need to top it up because we had a, you know that power outage. And so I used up the fuel in this and it needs to be topped off because this is the one I like to keep on my dining room table. So when the power goes off, this one gets lit. lit. And I wanted to talk about this because I wish I would have got a picture of it when we got it. I picked this up. We used to have a an antique secondhand store. They had a lot of neat stuff in there. But when they were going out of business, they were selling stuff really cheap. So we kept going out there and getting all kinds of great stuff out there. And I got some cast iron skillets. I got several different lanterns, all kinds of stuff for a great price. Well, anyway, this one, I fell in love with it because I loved this, the glass on this. And I love these little tiny, these smaller lamps for using in various places where you don't need as much light. And, or, you know, for setting on the dining room table, this is perfect. I almost wasn't going to get it because the base was this ugly square box that um, it, it, it made me think that this was made in the 70s. Not the glass part. I'm thinking, well, you know, that looks like it could have been made anytime. But the box made me think of 70s because it wasn't a real wood box. It was, well, it was like fiberboard with that cheesy uh, wood print papering over it. And so it just, it just looked cheap and ugly. And then it was just a square box. But you couldn't just take the take it off the box because the bottom of this little lantern has a peg. So this glass part, when it was made, 
it actually was made so it has this little glass peg and that peg was made to sit down inside that box to help hold it in place. So we couldn't just take the box off and have it be good. It was no way it would stand up on that little peg. And so what Patrick did is he made this beautiful, let me take this off so I don't, I don't drop it and there's no oil left in here right now. So he made this beautiful little walnut stand and obviously put a little hole in there and then uh, glued it in there really well. So it's very solid and it's one of all my small lanterns like this, because I have several and all of them I've bought second hand. Uh, this is my favorite one. And <laughs> so anyway, it's just really great. But So we either are running our lighting mostly off of solar power or even using some natural light like this, not just when the power goes out. But yeah, if you're interested in more about how we light our home, I have at least two videos out there about that. I'll link to at least one of them down below, the one I think that has the most information, so you can see how we do things here. And for those of you who are new, we are partially off grid, so in case you didn't pick up on that. So we do have solar power, we have a wood stove, we do a lot of things off grid, but we also have public power and if you're curious as to why we would do both, I have a couple videos on that. I have an old one called Partially Off Grid, and then I have another new one coming out um, probably in about two weeks. <laughs> it's, it's up there, it's not published yet. So be watching for that. So the next thing I wanted to talk about, and this just came to mind this morning because I was so excited when my son came over to visit yesterday, and this is Jackson's dad. We got to talking about homeschooling. Patrick and I did a video of two, three years ago about homeschooling and some of the things that we used for our kids and things that we recommended. And one of the things I highly recommended in that video was the Charlotte Mason Companion. This, I think, every homeschooler needs to have. It's such an excellent book and I think before you start homeschooling, read through this book. I think it will totally change if you haven't started yet. I think it will really change your thoughts on how to approach homeschooling because a lot of us, especially those who, of us who went to public school ourselves, when we first start homeschooling our kids, we think, okay, we got to have a classroom setting. And it's like, well, what's the point of homeschooling if you feel that you have to follow the public school outline for schooling. Now one thing that you'll learn is that if you have more than one child is that each child may be different. My oldest son did like a more structured environment. He liked have be, sitting at the table and doing his work at the table where Justin was different. He liked doing his, his schoolwork on the floor or in his bedroom or on his bed. And you have to learn how to work with each child's learning style and let it come naturally. But anyway, the Char Charlotte Mason Companion, when you go through this, it's just, it just makes it kind of come together and make sense and you real, realize how easy and fun homeschooling can be you're working off their natural curiosity anyway and it's really just a beautiful way of instruction so and now with my grandbaby i'll be doing this because that's one of the things is they already kind of mentioned how they do hope that i will be able to help out because i've already been experienced at homeschooling and of course i am so what i've decided is i'm going to is I'm going to give this one to Kayla and Ryan so that they can have it. And I went ahead and ordered up another one for myself because I want to make sure. And I might order up another one because I'm sure when my youngest son is getting married this summer. And I have a feeling they're probably not going to wait too long to have kids either. And so they're probably going to consider homeschooling. So I want to make sure I have one for them as well. So I'll probably be ordering another one. So I highly recommend it. And keep in mind, and one thing I, I want to remind you too, is you can go to Amazon through our links, but especially when it comes to books, you do not have to buy the brand new book. Go through the link and then look at used or new. When it comes to books, usually you can find books in near perfect condition for maybe half the price or less than what you'd pay for the brand new book so you can really save yourself money doing it that way and then along with that i also recommend getting the simply grammar that that's uh, made to go right along with the charlotte mason companion this is an illustrated primer i think i talked about this in that homeschool video which i'll link to down below as well but it just i love the images it has in it they're just very kind of classic old-fashioned images and, but the images aren't, aren't there just to look at. They actually play into a lot of the, uh, the lessons and the exercises that are in here. And it's just, it's a very well done book. And again, it's just kind of got this more natural 
old fashioned type flow that just makes sense. Even if you have started homeschooling, if you haven't looked into these, I do highly recommend them. And again, I'll link to both of those below so you can take a look at them there. And then right here I have started, I was actually only gonna start one quart, but because I forgot I was adding another, gonna try adding another herb to it, I had to go ahead and get two quarts started of my homemade pain reliever and I do have an old video on this, but this one has a new herb added to it. And so I have a video coming out in the probably about two weeks, I think it is, about natural pain relievers in general. And I do mention this recipe and what exactly I used in here. Uh, you can see my old recipe, which I have found to be very effective. It's actually, I made it over two years ago and I'm finally getting to the bottom of it. And to me, it's really an effective way. This is my new recipe. I can't say yet how good it's going to be. So uh, hopefully by the time that video comes out, I think I'll, I should be able to at least, it should be strong enough, even though it still ha needs to extract for a while longer. I think it should be strong enough. I can at least give it a try and get an idea if it's going to work as good as my old recipe. So be watching for that video to come out in the near future. And then one more thing I wanted to bring up is slowly starting to get into garden season. I had someone recently come into a video and say, where's all the garden videos? I subscribe to your channel to watch your garden videos. It's like, well, hello, <laughs> it's January. And where we live, we haven't started planting anything yet. I don't know about where some other people live, but here it's still the middle of winter. So uh, no, we haven't planted anything yet. However, next month I'll be starting my tomatoes and my peppers and maybe a few other things. Those are the two main things I start in February and that's just the time frame that we do things even though I have videos out showing how I do that I'll probably do another video this year just to keep you updated especially if I make any changes in in the way I do it which I doubt <laughs> but uh, you know it's a good idea just to keep some new fresh material coming out as far as that goes because changes happen all the time in every year and if you just if you've seen that video that I should have just published about the lessons I learned from my 2020 garden I recommend you check that video out because I feel like there's a lot there that even highly experienced longtime gardeners could probably glean a few little tips from but with that in mind I have started picking a little bit at my garden to get it ready for planting but I have to do it between the heavy rains well I don't have to I could go out there and work in the heavy rain but I got stuff inside I got to get done skirt orders to work on apron orders YouTube videos to shoot and edit and editing I tell you takes a long time and I'm working on my taxes and blah 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 because I do all our bookkeeping I've been doing that for many years so uh yeah there's plenty enough to be done inside but when we actually get a little bit of sun here and there i try to get outside and get in it as much as i can so i can get that vitamin d get that good healthy sunshine on my poor tired eyes as well as obviously starting to get things prepared so one thing i've done so far is i've shoveled out the chicken coop most of it anyway and spread that in the garden area where i plan to put the corn and I've also started trimming back some of my herbs. It's a good idea to do that in the fall, but once those heavy rains come, nobody wants to be out there just getting drenched while they're cutting their herbs. It's so much better to get out there when the sun's shining because then you're taking advantage of all of that. So for me, it's usually before, you know, a little bit at a time, as we start getting ready for planting is when I go cut down all the dead stalks on my herbs. So I've got some mints I'm working on. I got to start cutting back the marshmallow. It's not that you have to, but to make your garden look nicer for one, it is best to cut it down. Plus your herbs are going to start will bush out more and just they'll just look nicer and give you more leaves rather look, than looking leggy and spindly so it's a good idea to chop those down you can take them clear down to the ground depending on what they are or you can cut them down to a certain length it just depends on what the herbs are and what it is you're doing usually when you're talking marshmallow you take the whole stalk out clear down to the ground it should be that usually in the spring is when those are easier to just break off right at the base anyway that's another reason why i don't mess with them until until early spring when it comes to those so i do have a little bit of gardening going on right now just not a lot and as i get a chance i go out there and pull 
uh, weeds and grass growing in my pots. I've been, you know, doing that, picking out a little bit here and there to get ready for planting in the spring. Okay, well, that's my this and that for this week. And don't forget to check out the videos in the description box down below and other links I'll be putting. And remember, you need to either click on show more, which would be right down here if you're on a PC, a computer, or if you're on a smart device, a phone, a tablet, whatever, look over here on this side and you should see a little gray arrow or triangle that's pointing downwards. If you click on that, it'll open up the description box so you can find all the information that we put in there. All right, well, I hope you enjoyed this video. Thanks for watching. Take care and God bless.